Go sit down, Dotson. Dotson! We got Dotson here! Dotson! Nobody cares, see? Nobody cares. Conspicuous by their absence is the Delisle family. Where is Nicole Delisle? Where's Pete Delisle? I'll tell you right where they are. They're in some nickel and dime garbage fed down the road in Kentucky, not here, not here to send this place off with a bang, the place they love so much. Why? Because I broke Pete's back and I broke Nicole's back and they will never be back. J.C. Flash, the actions of Ben Chimera last week as he took this out Nicole place Wild. Disgusting. Is to represent the best of independent wrestling. And the whole Home Depot posse, including the one trying to use her speak and say on her smartphone right now. I don't fucking work for Home Depot, dumbass. You don't work at all. You stop cussing or I'll have CPS come get your kids earlier. You are an unfit mother and an unfit wrestling fan. Pete, Nicole, Gigi, everyone who's playing wrestler is out of here. It's a little too late for that, but they're gone. And next week, I'm calling it right now, Monster Island wants Alpha Sigma Sigma in this ring for the FGW Tag Team Championships. We are walking out of this building with those championships. Put your teeth back in your mouth. JC Flash, is that who I think it is? Indeed it is. That, that, that's a man that calls himself Steeble. Coming out here, interrupting Benjamin Chimera, who, by the way, has made some very crude, inappropriate comments that I will not even close to condone about my broadcast partner, Nicole Delisle, when he did her last week was disgusting to answer your question, but Steve, out here in the ring. You're absolutely right, JC, that this action is my last time, week. But I'll tell you what, I yield my time to you because I'm, I'm motivated, I'm interested. Go ahead. You want to take responsibility for the Lyles not being here, that's fine. The one person I'm concerned with, and I have a feeling that you know what I'm talking about because you've been in his ear ever since. I walked out the door, and that's my brother, Ryan Wilde. And I know that he and I have issues, but I know that you, you're just sitting there drilling away, picking at his insecurities, telling him things that, oh, you. I know talking to you is going to get me absolutely nowhere. Ryan, you see this, you're watching this. FGW here is no more, and I'll be damned if I'm going to let this company get out of this building while I'm not in this ring and you're not standing beside me. my brother. I don't care what we've got going on. I don't care that you put me through put me through a door last time I was standing here. 
I just want my brother by my side in my corner. Very emotional words from Steve will hear. They're asking for the microphone. Got something to say. Simply responding to what Steve Look at just you, Steve. Guess what? This company is leaving this building. I'm sure we'll find another one, but let's pretend for a second that we don't and we're done forever. You and your brother are two of this territory's greatest wrestlers. Former three-time FGW Tag Team Champion. Roach! Roach is one of the best tag teams ever I have ever seen. No question there, JC. They are one forget of the best. Forget the Legion of Doom. Forget Demolition. Forget whoever. You guys are better than all of them. High praise. That is high praise. And I know you love your brother. I can empathize with that a little bit. But the reason why your brother left you after you got fired, because you lost to the Vikings, was exactly... The reason you're crying right now, your mental and emotional health problems. What's your problem? What's your, problem? your mental and emotional health problems are is what has held Roach down and back for years. And your brother wanted to break free from that. All I did was tell him what he already knew. And that is, was well, as good as you are, and as great as you've been, he's better off without you. Now that is an underhanded shot, so, JC, and even you have to agree with well, that. I had this time and had this platform for myself, and you came and interrupted and you started crying. Obviously, Steve, obviously, Steve Anderson, you want to fight. You want to fight, Steve? You don't work here anymore. You're not contracted here anymore. Bryce, if I want to fight this idiot later, can I do it, yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Bryce, give it a thumbs up. I'll tell you what. I will send you off into that good night like the warrior you are. Get your head right. Stop crying. Walk out that door, get your gear, and come back here and show me that you're some kind of a man. Will you fight me? Yes or no? Will I fight you? Yeah. I'll whip your ass all the way back to Detroit, son. It doesn't get any more official than that. This is gonna happen, Keith. The coward fights. These things are definitely heating I'll up. I'll see you later tonight, sweetheart. JC, you see Stevel pacing the ring, ready for a fight here tonight. We're gonna see if there's so much action tonight. This is a shockwave you don't wanna miss. If you're gonna find that out, then just stay tuned. And his opponent this evening, from the University Town the Road. JC, things are kicking off hot here tonight with Ben Myers coming in, the, taking the fight to Jake Rose. That's Ben Myers, no longer the pledge with a cactus clothesline. Out on the raft, Jacob Rose, you mentioned that earlier, taking ownership of the pledge's name, excuse me, his former name, that's Ben Myers, smacking Jacob Rose's head off of the apron. Absolutely, JC, and you have to believe that this is gonna get very personal because all of this started when Jake Rose actually put uh, Ben Myers through a ladder of all things. 
going to get really personal in future tense because I see, like, I think it's gotten real personal already. You are correct there, JC. It definitely has gotten personal already. Jacob Rose off of the rope. Fires out of the way. Leg drop to the throat. And what a creative use of the ropes there, JC. As you see, he's going for the pin. And both legs there. Kick out, though, from Jacob Rose. Indeed he did, and that was very smart, hooking both legs. The pledge, of course, of former Shockwave champion Jacob Rose, one of only two Triple Crown champions, former Shockwave Super State of Memorial and first ever tag team champion. And that ring gets stopped out by the pledge. Absolutely, and I do believe you meant to say Ben Myers there because he is no longer the pledge. But interesting. Right, you're right. You're right. You're right. But interesting side note, JC. Ben Myers has not beaten Jake Rose in any competition yet. I'm going to see if tonight is the night that he can do that. And you're right. It's, he's been the pledge the whole time. I know that he's not anymore. His identity was stolen from him as Jacob Rose, the new pledge, with a beautiful German suplex to Ben Myers. Absolutely, and you see Jake Rose going for the cover, and he only got a two count, but you have to believe that's because he had the leg. He got the two count. Well, he was one second away from victory with Jacob Rose. Now uh, touching the head of Ben Myers. Now we have the rear chin lock. Trying try to just squeeze the life out of the opposition is Jacob Rose. Yes, he is, and that's gotta be that's got to be difficult for Ben Myers because he's also putting all the weight on his back there. Ben Myers trying to fight out of this difficult position. That slam from Jacob Rose, the pledge. Very underhanded tactic, but it does get him a one count, JC. You have to believe that that could have that could have secured a victory right there. That's the thing about this business. That's the thing about this game. That's the thing about the rules of pro wrestling. Three seconds, that's all it takes to win a match. That is all the time you need. And a couple flakes of the eye could all be over. You are correct there. And just like that, Ben Myers in the blink of an eye got the reversal. And it looks like he has taken the fight to Jacob Rose. Going for that corner springboard bulldog. Face first in the center of the ring goes Jacob Rose. There's the cover off the back press. And you heard the FGW fans showing their appreciation for that springboard bulldog. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here tonight in what is the second to last shockwave here at FCW, here at the FGW Arena. An uncertain future ahead of us. But action like what we're going to see tonight, what we're seeing right now tonight with Jacob Rosa, that V-Trigger needs the face of Ben Myers, knocked out to the apron. And you notice, JC, he was limping as he went back, so it almost looks like Jake Rose caught some of that himself. Myers for the counter. Jacob Rose, to your point, the knee lane came out. There was a shoulder tackle. A second shoulder tackle. And he brought that leg sweep all the way from Russia. Absolutely, JC. And you see Ben Myers very quick back to his feet, getting ready to call for, I believe this used to be called the Pledge of Zelba. Oh. Stiff kick from Jake Rose. Jacob Rose, backbreaker. But you Fire know, still in a vulnerable position here. The Falcons arrow, the cover. So close, JC. You have to believe that Jake Rose was almost there. Ben Myers looked like he was definitely feeling the effects of that. I think that goes without saying, Captain Obvious. As Jacob Rose go for that stop, that for sure would have been it. Yes, it would have, but you, you notice, J.C. DDT! But you know what I've been noticing, J.C., about Jake Rose is he is not showing that savage streak as of lately. He, it seems that he has been having a very sporting contest. Hang on, sharpshooter! Jacob Rose, he's in a lot of trouble here. Yes, he is. Can he get to the ropes, though? Ben Myers pulling him right back to the oh, ring. That Jacob is a veteran Rose. move. Jacob Rose, he is in the center of the ring. Benjamin Myers continuing to torque that pressure. He needs to sit down below on the back. Jacob Rose trying to resist, trying to reach 
to that bottom rope, trying to break the hold, and Myers again. And you have to believe this is doing something to his psyche because that is the second time, JC, the twice he has pulled Jake Rose back from breaking that hold. You see how he fell over more. But Jake Rose. Jacob Rose has gotten the ropes. He, 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 he continued to get that hold on tighter and tighter, got a better footing. The longer that hold was, you know, the longer that he was tied up in that hole, he being Jacob Rose. Jacob Rose, though, able to get to the ropes before Myers could get that hold and locked in the way he really needed it to, to tap out somebody like Jacob Rose. Indeed, and you saw Jake Rose collapse there, definitely still feeling the effects of everything that Ben Myers has put him through, and we're going for a slice bread. Ooh, and it looks like... Yeah. Big shot into that slice bread. Here we go, the cover. One more time, is this all? But you notice, JC, that kick out was not as enthusiastic. Jake Rose is definitely hurt. Absolutely, yeah. Ben Myers, he has caused Jacob Rose a lot of agony. I think agony is the right word. He's taken it to Jacob Rose throughout the early going to where we are in this match. And I think he might be about, I don't know what we're going to call it, but he's going to drop a certain elbow on Jacob Rose. Maybe not. He's out of the way. There's that quickness. Oh, Jake Rose no. and a curb stomp. One, two, three. Just and like that. The Black Rose, the curb stomp all the way to victory. Exactly, JC, and that right there, you had to believe there was no way Ben was going to kick out of that. But you notice, look, Jake is, is he's not only favoring that leg, but he, he's being a little lethargic. It, it, that fight definitely took something out of him. Benjamin Myers may have found himself in a losing effort tonight against Jacob Rose, but very impressive opening match. Yes, it was. We've done this a couple times now. Oh, you want to go again? Oh, you want to go again? Ben, don't call me Pledge. Do not. You call me Pledge. We have done this multiple times. And all that you have yet to be here, you have earned my respect. Yeah. If I'm being honest, I think you've earned it. Copyright. It's a bunch. Yeah. Uh, some kind of trick? I don't know, JC. I'm I'm seeing the same thing you are, and I have to wonder if Ben has finally found his identity. Well, Jacob, the pledge is honored. Or if he's going back to the pledge. I this from a guy like you. It seems like Jacob turned a new chapter in his career. Jacob Rose definitely not showing the beach. To a new chapter? You never know. The push can't read. He's a fifth year freshman. He doesn't have no reason. Well, at least the pledge is very honest. And tonight is one of the last shows of OGW here in Hamilton. The pledge will greatly, greatly thank you, the fans. For everything. Next is a pledge all about the Sigma Sigma. Thank you guys. Seriously. Thank you. JC Flash, I believe we have our answer. The pledge is back, and the fans are showing their appreciation for this man. How about that? You never know what you're going to see in the FGW arena. Exactly. But, JC, we will be right back after these messages. It's always exciting. We just Jay Solo here at the FGW ring. I'm excited to hear what he's got to say. I so, think we all are. Thank you idiots didn't pay attention last week. And Maximum Mayhem, my stallions took on one person. There was two of my guys in the ring with only one guy, this fallen guy, that was a big deal or something. Tackle it was free. And still somehow, somehow, somebody Screwed up. Somebody made a big mistake. It was so long. It's almost like he's blind. Because somebody hit me right in my head. There was two of you. There was two of you. He was doing his job. It was an accident. No. Listen, 
Listen, I have a lot of belief in you. I really thought you could be somebody in this business. What are you going to do about it? Shut up. Have Logan Paul be the This is Birdie. You haven't wrestled in a while. You ain't up to a waste of time. Shea Solo has made it pretty clear that he's lost faith in Avery Hurts. Day one original Shea Solo teaches you a lesson. Get me a rep right now. Ladies and gentlemen, you see Bryant Huff just as confused as the rest of us. You got to learn today. Avery Hurts looks ready to go. Yes, he is. He is ready for second fight. Second two match of the night, Keith. Yes, it is, JC. And you see, oh, a double leg takedown from Avery. And he is just laying in the shots to Shea Solo, who said tonight he was going to go old school. And that full belt in, Shea Solo rolling it over, dragging Avery Hurts out of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, this has just turned into a fist fight on the outside. There is nothing remotely wrestling about this. The right hands, the body shots, the left hands. Throw it. The very hands every which way into Shea Solo. Solo low. Sending Solo right into that guard Yes. That's all right, JC. With as much action as going on, I, I can understand why you get a little flustered there. And I, a right to Avery's eyes. Off of the apron, goes Hurts. I almost said Shea Solo was going to throw Hurts into that guardrail. Hurts countered it one step ahead until right now. And the early going in this matchup. Yes, he is. And especially after last week, JC, I find it interesting that you see Bryant Huff circling the outside just as confused. Does he follow his mentor, Shea Solo, or his good friend Avery? You can imagine Bryant Huff certainly conflicted. Shoulders down of Shea Solo. Kick out. From the back, he ought to back down. But he did not hook the leg, JC. He didn't. And a thrust kick into the stomach. Double underhook. Face first goes. Shea Solo in the center of the ring. And Avery hurts the dark horse after uh, accidentally, as he said, hitting Shea Solo last week during that two on one handicap match. Well, Avery hurts. Really dazing Shea Solo with that double underhook face buster. Tie kicks right across the midsection of Solo. But you see that toughness of Solo. He is not only shaking them off, but immediately counters. Oh. Reverse DDT. The back of the head first, middle of the ring. The cover again from Shea Solo. Avery hurt Sandy. Looked up to Shea Solo. Sand down to his face while he's kicking him in the chest. Shea Solo grabbing the head of Avery Hurts, dropping him on the back of said head. Middle, or excuse me, the corner of the rink. Play it in the beatdown. You, you are correct there, JC. And, and to your point about Avery looking up to Shea Solo, I do remember being in training and hearing Avery specifically telling Shea that he was looking forward to debuting under his oh, tutelage. The cover again. And yeah, I've seen it too. I've seen the relationship that these two have formed over time. It's crazy that all of a sudden, after what happened last week, that was enough to take it to the lengths that we're seeing it unfold to right now. Indeed, JC, especially with some of the stuff that, uh, that Shea was so, sell, telling in the beginning. My goodness, I, I'm just so flabbergasted at, at how personal he got with Avery. Hurts fighting back. Shea Solo catching the dark horse. Dropping him. With that Uranagi to cover again. But another kick out. And to be fair there, JC, that one looked like a deep cover. I was not expecting Avery to kick out. I thought that was over. Shea Solo. Off at Avery Hurt, striking him down with that shot. Not just striking him down, but screaming about last week. It sh to your point, JC, it's it's absolutely amazing that last week a simple miss uh, a simple misstep like that could cause Shea Solo to, to just snap like this. 
But you see Bryant there. Bryant did not Bryant did not want to attack Avery. Soccer ball kick right to the ribs. Just punting Avery Hurts in the midsection. And you can gut rich power ball from Shea Solo. As if the wind wasn't knocked out of him enough already. Avery hurts. I think Shea Solo might be able to put him away right now if he wanted to. I do believe you are correct, JC, because I do not see as much fight in Avery as he did starting out with that double leg takedown. Avery powered his way back up, clutch at Shea Solo. Reverse DDT this time to Shea Solo. Here we go again to cover. That was a deep one, JC. I you know was really expecting that he, to be over. We mentioned it earlier. I feel it begs to be mentioned again. Brian Huff on the outside. What must he be thinking right now? I have no idea, JC, because I cannot imagine the conflict that this man has going on right now. Oh my Good Lord, watching one of his best friends just... The intensity go for that roundhouse kick. Shea Solo ducking it. Into the, into the corner goes Avery Hurts, head first into that turnbuckle. And then field across the ring from Shea Solo. And you notice, JC, there was a lot of disrespect in that toss. That was not a standard wrestling toss. He was just throwing Avery like he was tossing out the trash. Shawl breaker from Avery Hurts. Shoulder tackle. Shea Solo goes down. Hurts with a spinning wheel kick. Take it. Shea Solo down again. You can feel the intensity picking up, JC. What's he going for? Toe kick. Irish whip into the corner. Close line. Right to the core of Shea Solo. Second rope. Goes Avery Hurts. Tornado DDT. Head first spiked in the middle of the ring. Is Shea Solo. Here we go again. This is going to be it. But it's still, it's not it. It's still not Shea enough, Solo kick it out. And you see Brian Huff changing positions here again, JC. I am really curious. I might have to talk to him at intermission to see exactly what's going through his mind right now because watching one of his best friends and their mentor go at it like this, especially with the intensity, and you see the Avery. The airplane spin, the referee inadvertently knocked over. But is Brian going to get involved? He does. He, he has an allegiance to Shea Solo, and you see him. Picking up both Avery and... Oh! I think that just answers the question of where Brian Huff's allegiance is lie. But wait, Storm Garcon has made her way to the ring. I, what? And she she's just jumped on and started laying punches into Brian Huff. Low fast press from Storm. Meanwhile, this match is still continuing. Avery hurts Shea Solo fighting out in the corner. Stiff kick Kicks right from there in the chest. Oh. And the fight from Storm and Brian Huff going to the Watch back. Yes, it is. And Shea Solo looks like he's taking the opportunity to get the advantage. Oh, head first in the center of the ring goes Avery Hurts. And the a referee. deep cover. There we go. Shea Solo. That's victorious. the end of it. Shea Solo absolutely picking up the win here and getting revenge from last week with that, that missed kendo shot by Avery Hurts. in a personal manner that escalated extremely quickly. We see Shea Solo victorious over his former comrade with the help of Brian Huff. Storm getting involved. A lot just happened. I'm gonna take it in. Let's take a second to breathe. We'll be back. Southwest Ohio's premier wrestling federation can be found right here in Hamilton, Ohio, every Friday night. Join us for pulse-pounding, hard-hitting, old-school professional wrestling from some of today's best wrestling talent during Friday Night Fury. If your dream is to compete in the ring, Fox Pro Wrestling Academy is the place to go. Train under Hall of Fame trainer Cody Hawk and learn wrestling from one of the best of all time. Find out more by visiting us on Facebook at Future Great Wrestling. Oh, man! This is going to be an explosive match, especially with the popularity of Alpha Sigma Sigma, the brute force of the shield wall, and this just odd combination of a mime and storm. JC, I'm kind of curious to see how Jean-Paul Les Miserables and Storm Garçon actually tag well here tonight. I, I'm very curious to see how well they work together. 
find that out. Definitely uh, in there with two established teams. Two uh, top tier combinations here on the tag team and FGW. Looks like we're going to start things off with Jean Paul and Casey Jacobs. Chris Lock from Jacobs to Jean Paul. And Jean Paul with a nice wrist lock of his own. I mentioned in the past, uh, Jean Paul, I. Well, he's had other personas here at FGW. He's a former FGW champion, and who he's become, I'm just not a fan. I am not necessarily a fan of the uh, of the Jean Paul. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. You, I, I totally agree, JC. This is. It's a little absurd, but at the same time, you see the fans, they're, they're loving this no, for some no, reason. Rocking KC to sleep, he's rocking me to sleep. These people, they're loud, but inside they're going to sleep. I totally agree, JC. And you see Fa uh, Fairfax there trying to break up that pin. Very effective, dumping the mime to the outside and sending KC into the corner. Fall asleep. I don't believe so, but Storm did get a did get a blind tag as she turns around. KC might have slightly dozed off and then woke up and found himself. I don't know, but Storm breaks it with a triple draw breaker to a fair fact. Very impressive. Drop kick into the corner goes Harley. And you see, and you see though, even with all of that, Harley is still not down. And she even pushes Storm off to catch her and oh my god, the back of her head. JC, I don't know if, if Storm can go on here tonight. That that may have been the end of it, but she seems to be fighting. I don't know how. Cocked a concussion right into the skull of Storm. Ragnarok now tagged in. Yes, he is. And you know what? I, I'm curious if somebody is going to suffer that that sight altering green mist that he spews. Double Polish hammer taking down Storm. Body shot. A stunning shot to consecutively to the midsection. The chop to the chest takes down Storm. Fitbear, the bigger, stronger competitor here. Yes, he is. And when you step to somebody who's twice your size, even even just at storm size, you have to be ready for the for the backlash. Look at the way the storm is being contorted. Not to mention the thuds. Those turkey clubs across the chest of Grace on. Absolutely, JC, and she is, she is showing the effects of it right there, but we could almost hear those those chest pounds. Somehow Storm kicked out of that, JC. I am totally confused. And Storm has a lot of fight at her, but I'm still not convinced, regardless of how much fight she has. Regardless of how large heart she shows, I, I honestly think she might be confused. She very well might be, JC, and you see the, oh, the teamwork here of Shield Wall and why they are absolutely oh just God, a, get to the head. Just as you said earlier, top tier talent, that is for sure. And that heart, that fortitude, continues to show as Storm continues to fight. It seems like Storm has definitely been taking the brunt of the punishment here, and even more so from the shield ball. Back of the head again. Ever since that initial whiplash, things have not been the same for Storm. No, they have she not. She is Nor clinging to anything that she can hold on to, literally right now. Oh, and you see the shield maiden there standing on Storm's hand, just taunting her before she kicked it. I don't know, JC. Based off of that comment, it almost looks like the Shield Maiden is, is actually enjoying this. PK to the spine of Storm. And I think you're right. The attitude to Fairfax and Ragnarok that they've had for the last several months. There's been a lot of this. This taken to an extreme. We don't have long here in the FGW arena. You want to be remembered. You want to make an impact. You want to make a statement. Any time you have it, especially with our time being short. That Fairfax and Ragnarok are going to make sure these people remember them. Oh, yes, they are, JC. They are definitely making an impact here on the FGW crowd with that just thunderous crack from a chop. Ragnarok just, I don't know if he left anything in Storm's chest after that.
match. Oh, and we see Shield Maiden pulling the mime off the off the apron, taunting him a little bit there. But we see the Alpha Sigma boys coming to coming to his rescue. I don't know, JC. It almost seems like this might turn into a four on two. All I know is Storm is in a lot of trouble. She needs to get the tag, and she needs to get the tag fast. You can tag anybody, by the way. You tag are Alpha Sigma Sigma. Tag Sean Paul, whoever is whoever you can reach as Sean Paul knocked down for punishment being administered to Storm. Backsplash for that senton from Fenrir. And every molecule of air was sent straight out of her body. A deep cover there, but JC, that last cover before Watch this. Storm reach it. Reach it for Sean Paul. Nope. Ragnarok pulling her back. He, he absolutely caught her. Seeing a display of brutality like nothing I will ever, or at least not soon, forget. I don't, you see Jean Paul trying to, I believe that's a chair he had in his hand. He threatening the ref with the mime chair, but it, 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 it definitely did get the ref's attention so that Ragnarok is here. All right. I know that there was no chair, JC, but what he was miming was a chair. Okay, okay. He was miming a chair. I apologize. Call it a chair if there's no chair. That's all I'm saying. I will call it miming. I do hold apologize. Hold on, hold on. The, the head and the jaw, that jaw breaker again. Grayson! She gets. And miming a chair yet again is Jean Paul Le Miserable. What in the. And you see Shield Wall. Oh! Miscommunication, the rare miscommunication by the Vikings there as, as Fairfax took the shot. Well, there's no miming going on right now. That is a sleeper hole. That might even be a choke. I can't tell from this angle. To your point, JC, it is a very, that was a very deep sleeper hold. Blind tag by Brent Oakley there, and you see he is dumping Ragnarok right out of the, out of the ring, going Oakley. after mine. We're gonna capitalize as he should. Going for something big there. Sean Paul not trying to let Fred Oakley get over on him there. An exchange of waist locks one after another. You know, JC to. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, Ragnarok with that. This. Give it Sean Paul a new paint job. Here's the cover. That's it. With the assist from Ragnarok, Brent Oakley gets the win over Jean Paul Le Miserable. Brent Oakley and Casey Jacobs showing their veteran acumen, acumen here. But and just a, a slugfest from the shield wall. They they absolutely hit Storm harder than I have ever seen them hit anybody else. Oh, the vibe already can't speak. He doesn't speak anyway. Now he can't speak. It's ridiculous. But Alpha Sigma Sigma with a big win. Showing why they're the tag team champions representing MGW. Fairfax and Ragnarok though getting a little rowdy. Uh oh, KC has the uh, has the microphone. Next week, curtain call, right here. Shoe wall looks a little mad at us, right? I'd say. Monster Island. Yeah, we ain't forget about you. I'm still feeling that chair shot, brother. So how about this? Curtain call next week. We put the titles on the line. Shoe wall, Monster Island. Hell, anybody else can show up, I don't care. You better bring your best A game. Because I promise you, we gonna bring ours. Because when I say Alpha, you say Sig. Alpha, Sig. Alpha, Sig. Alpha. Sig. Alpha. Sig.
Ladies and gentlemen, the FGW faithful showing their appreciation for Alpha Sigma, issuing an open challenge to Shieldwall to join that tag team championship match next week. Well, many reasons to do that with this curtain call on May 19th, our last bout for now. Folks, you all saw that I missed any of the action left tonight. Limited time here in the FGW arena. We're going to make the most of it, and you're about to find that out. Very long, all the way back to the beginning. I was not actually aware of that, JC. That is actually something I just now learned. Well, I'm a broadcast journalist. You're you, and you can learn some things from me. You are correct on that, JC, and I do, in fact, intend to learn some things from you tonight. That is for sure. Hoffa Joe. Bad Brechter, what, excuse me, Brad Victor, what's known as Big Booty Brad. And here we go. Good day, Hewitt. Not getting, well, that much of a good reception from the FGW fans. I don't know what that's all about. That definitely seemed a little mixed there, don't you think, JC? Mixed is the word. I just think they just were not in the good Nate Hewitt all that much, and I don't get it. He is so good, Nate Hewitt. He is very good, JC, and, and you can see right there, he is taking the fight. He Well, he was trying to take the fight to Pompano Joe and Brad Vectors there. And it, the mask ripped off of Nate. Nate in the past, we've seen it. We've seen it time and time again. He's just not the same man that he is when he dons the masks that he brings to that ring. I have noticed that as well, JC, that it seems like when he has the mask, again, he is a completely different person. You know, something else I don't understand. How does Jushin Thunder Liger wear a mask for 40 years that never gets wrapped up in his face? Maybe I can hardly get through a match without it happening to him. JC, I have to correct you, that, correct you there because uh, Kishin Liger was actually what was under that mask when Jushin Thunder Liger has been unmasked on two separate occasions. You know, nobody would have known that. Maybe a couple people, but nobody would have known that. You had to call me out like that, right? It's not calling you out, JC. Let, no, I'm let, trying to let's concentrate on the match. Triple threat match. How about you shut your mouth? Call the match. Here we have the side headlock. Headlock takeover from Brad Vector. And you see those triple threat rules coming into play here is good Nate Hewitt is still on the outside, not being exercised with a 10 count here. Go for the handshake. Yeah. All right. And they do it. Yep. Got to love sportsmanship, especially between two great athletes like that. Oh, poor Nate. Nate definitely taking the brunt of that one there. Look at that. Tandem offense to Nate Hewitt, Brad Vector. Both taken down by Pompano Joe. And JC, that type of offense right there is exactly why Pompano Joe is a long, long time veteran here in FGW. Pompano Joe, Irish whip by Brad Fechtler, who's taken down with a shoulder tackle. Off of the ropes goes Pompano Joe. Brad Fechtler back on the offense, leapfrog. And going for that big body slam is Brad Vector. And Pompano showing the effects immediately as he tries to stand back up, but holding his lower back there. Good Nate Hewitt coming back in the ring here, and it looks like he's just gets flipped right over both of them. How impressive is Brad Vector? You have an excellent point there, JC, because that right there is not something we typically see from anybody here in FGW. Vector, it's been a while since he's been here, but let's not forget what he's capable of. Hard track from Pompano Joe. Speaking of capable, but you, know, you would be hard pressed to find a more capable competitor than everybody's homie, Pompano Joe. Couldn't agree with you more there, JC, because every time I see this man, he brings out something new in his arsenal that we've never seen before, and it's, it's always entertaining to see what kind of creative stuff he comes up with. Entertaining, effective, impressive, technical, all adjectives that would describe Pompano Joe, the chop to the chest of Brad Vector. 
Nate Hewitt still creeping around somewhere on the outside. I'm not entirely sure that we're going to see good Nate Hewitt here again because it looks like he is really down and out. Tip toss and tip, Brad Vector not letting it happen. Going for the counter, Pompano Joe countering that counter. Brad Vector standing in his ground, trying to throw Pompano Joe out of the ring. And there he is, the man that we were just speaking of. Good day to you and tossing Brad Vector through and the guardrail. I think he broke it. He literally went through the guardrail Land there, JC. The crowd just through that guardrail door. I do believe that I do believe that evil Nate, or I'm sorry, good Nate here. Yes, he has. He has gotten the advantage with a suplex there. How many matches has Harley Race finished with that suplex? That's Very an effective maneuver. Not quite enough, though, to get the better of Pompano Joe on this particular occasion. That suplex is a very effective move, JC. Elbow across the mouth once again, continuously to the left, to the right. That is classic Nate Hewitt. And we can see Brad Vector's making his way back in the ring as Pompano feels the effect of a clothesline. But good Nate here. Looks like he has taken the fight to Brad again. And we can see Brad is, is tied up in a place he does not want to be. Looks like a sleeper hold from good Nate Hewitt. A counter from Brad Vector, side headlock. Pompano Joe regaining his footing. The FGW fans. Bringing a, bringing a rhythm throughout this arena. And you can see now, JC, uh, all, all three men have somebody in a move as they've got our new our new referee, Bucky. And, and, and good Nate has him. Wow. Oh. That referee could not stand for this. Very quite literally there, JC, because as you've watched, he dropped on his butt for a, a nice jawbreaker and actually got all three men with it. Close line. This time to Pompano Joe, Brad Vector on the offense. Elbow to good Nate. Elbow to Pompano Joe. And there was some malice in those clotheslines, JC. He was absolutely not happy with that. Oh no, he's gonna use that booty. I see where Brent Oakley's been studying at the University of Brad Vectors as we go for another big booty Brad. Flying hip attack from Brad Vector. JC, that's why I like having you on commentary with me because that right there is not something I would have known, a flying hip attack. Very educational being here on commentary with my broadcast colleague, J.C. Flash. You might also call it an ass flash right to the face. But how about that tandem offense? Clutching that DDT inadvertently, I would say. Cover. Good day to him, taking complete advantage of that situation. Yes, he was, J.C. And as you can see here, it looks like he's still taking advantage of it by getting a little breather in while Pompano Joe tries to work his way up to his feet. Very smart move on good Nate's part there. Taking that breather while Pompano Joe is expending some energy. Oh, face first goes good Nate. And that one looked like it hurt. Pompano Joe trying to fire up the crowd as the FGW faithful show their appreciation. Pompano Suicide Joe. Suicide tied to the outside to Brad Vector. Excellent awareness from Pompano Joe. Leaping calf kick. Takes down Good Nate Hewitt off of the back press and the kick out from Good Nate. Yes, it was. And a very close kick out there, JC, because Nate looked like he did not get his arm up, but he, he very clearly did. The ref called it a two count, very clean. Chop across the chest, knife edge style from Pompano Joe. 
Caught Nate Hewitt on the ropes. Nate with a counter. Waist lock from Hewitt. Counter waist lock from Pomino Joe. The trifecta, no! Quadruple counter. Shoulder from Brad Fector to Nate Hewitt. Ow! Oh. And a sunset flip for both Pompano Joe and good Nate from Brad Vectors there. We see Brad trying to capitalize. He's got Pompano up. Power slap! And you see Pompano immediately arcing up from that. But even the Nate. twist of Nate! And Brad Vectors goes to the outside. But can Nate capitalize? He's, he's right there, but Pompano is not getting up. Pompano does not look like he can get up, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you who is getting up. Getting up to the top rope, that's Nate Hewitt. Taking to the skies, and who is, is that the Kentucky Fried Cannibal? That is, what? Bubba Hewitt coming out here to screw over good Nate. What in the world is going on here, JC? No! Big win for Buffalo Joe, but what we have just witnessed. And the winner of this match, Bubba Joe! You know, we have not seen Bubba Hewitt in quite some time, and I am very, very curious to see why he came back just to, just to shove Evil Nate off the turnbuckle there when he was going for a high-risk move. Well, Bubba Hewitt's never been the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm surprised that he can even think for himself enough to turn on Day Hewitt like this. What is this about? Hewitt climbing. I up think the we're ropes. about to find out. What? A twist of Nate to good Nate Hewitt from Bubba. He's taking it. That is what? That is brother Daniel, formerly known as Danny O'Brien. Why? Why has he come out here to attack good Nate? Brother Daniel from Matt Taylor's congregation. That, w why? What What does this mean for FGW is next that, week? Is that the cousin of Nate Hewitt all this time? I have so many questions. Uh, so we'll be right back. Chimera, again resorting to those dirty tactics before I can even finish my thought, before Steve will can turn around. Excuse me, that's Steve Anderson. And you know, to, you know, JC, I have noticed that Benjamin Chimera has been getting a lot more violent lately. I mean, obviously what he did to Nicole and Pete last week, what he's just done to Steve here. I, he, I, and I do apologize. I don't have a problem, per se, with what happened to Nicole. Nicole jumped in front of that chair. But the fact is, the fact that he laughed at what took place, the fact that he, who knows what kind of damage he did to Nicole. Steve Anderson bleeding on the ramp, by the way, but the, his reaction, that was what got me. I have done some vile things in my career. I've done some dirty things in my day. There's no disputing that. But for him to attack my broadcast partner, react the way he did, and then there's, there's no place for that here at FGW. There's not. There isn't, JC. And I do agree, even though you have done some dastardly deeds in your time, it, it, no judgment here, but 
you have never done anything like Benjamin Chimera. I will agree with that. that you know, Steve Anderson busted wide open. That but chair right to his skull. But. He was, uh, on wobbly legs. I don't know, JC. The original monster here looks like he is he is definitely trying to fight through the pain. Well, this man, Steve Anderson, once known as the Queen City Killer, has seen his share of hardcore, hardcore, no holds barred, rough neck matches in professional wrestling. Not something he's a stranger to. Me and Busted Open, he's been there. But now, at the very beginning of this match, having endured that, having to compete against the competitor of the caliber of Benjamin Chimera, well, Steve, he has got his work cut out for him. Yes, he does, JC. And uh, to be honest, I, I, I cannot fathom what it's going to be like starting this match with a busted head like that. Right hand from Chimera repeatedly to Steve Anderson. Ben Taking Ky it to the open wound of Anderson. Trying to bust that, that wound open a little bit further. Steve, Steve Anderson here, I, I, JC, I don't know how he's gonna how he's gonna make it through this match. I mean, I understand he is one of the original monsters here at FGW. Oh, oh. Right to the face of well, that answers my question. There's a lot more fight in Steve Anderson than we really thought. Come on, Steve! Oh. Chop across the chest. Chimera again with a shot to the head of Anderson. But you know, JC, the, the FGW faithful did not seem to, to appreciate the way Chimera started this match because if you recall, Steve, Steve Anderson has not been here since Origins. And that, that, ha that came a defeat at the hands of Shieldwall, which is actually what split Roach up. As Chimera continues to dissect Anderson. But you know what I'm noticing, JC, is he was smiling there almost to the same degree that you were mentioning about the way he was laughing about Nicole. Which is fine. You know what, Steve Anderson, whether he's officially part of FGW or not, he is a competitor. Nicole Delisle is not a competitor. She dove in front of her husband. How about that jawbreaker from Steve Anderson to Chimera? And unfortunately, JC, I do have to agree with you on both parts. Not only did Nicole absolutely take the shot for her husband, but on top of that, it really was unnecessary to do to somebody who is just a commentator. Chimera going for that clothesline. Anderson out of the way. The shots to Steve Anderson right to the face, right to the jaw, right to the head. And I said it once, I'll say it again. Chimera did not intend to do what he did to Nicole, to Nicole. What I found classless was the way he reacted to it. I spoke nothing but the praises of this man. Chimera, so capable. He is a veteran. He he knows this business inside and out. The rear chin lock to Steve Anderson right now. Steve is, uh, I said it again. I said it once, I'll say it again. He's got his work cut out for him. In there with Benjamin Chimera. And JC, to that point, you almost got to wonder if he's got double the work cut out for him because he is used to being a tag team competitor. And here is a one-on-one -on -one match. Cover. Tymer has spent plenty of his career as a single star, as has Steve. That is correct. But if I recall correctly, and you may have to get, you may have to correct me on this one, JC. But if I recall correctly, Benjamin Chimera used to have a tag team partner that he worked with for several years. Again, he is a seasoned tag team star. He has also spent a long time in his career as a singles competitor. Benjamin Chimera, all of his experience, more than 20 years, he, on, has, he, he can do it all. That, that is, is the point I'm making. It's Steve Anderson finding that out the hard way. Excellent point, JC, because you are correct. The more I sit here and think about it, Benjamin Chimera really has been everywhere and done everything, especially as long as he's been in this business. So, and, ooh. Anderson stalking Chimera. Chimera answering that Steve's experience. assault with a knee lift 
an elbow to the back of the head. Steve Anderson down, Chimera with his attention. On Steve Anderson, who is in a defensive position at this time. And just like that, it looks like the situation has been reversed, JC. Looks like Chimera's in the defensive now, and, and Steve Anderson is on the offense. Anderson, take it down, Benjamin Chimera. Steve Anderson, he needs to capitalize right now, real quick and in a hurry. He needs to put away Benjamin Chimera in any way he can. You know what I did notice there, JC, is when Benjamin Chimera hit the ground, he was actually favoring his left arm, something you don't see from Benjamin Chimera very often, actually feeling the effects of a shoulder tackle. Flatliner from Steve Anderson. Chimera goes face first. But hold on. Chimera's arm draped over Steve. Unfortunately, Chimera was still let over top of Steve, which technically yes. necessitated a pinfall. Uh, Steve Anderson had his shoulders yes, down. Unfortunately, one of the rare instances you can see a move going backwards on the on the executor right there. Well, that is telling in this regard. It looks like that Steve Anderson might not have quite as much to give as Benjamin Chimera does at this point. Even though Steve Anderson trying to get this crowd to their feet. That is what I'm talking about. Chimera just like that. Haymaker to the face of Steve. Anderson down. That experience from Chimera. Very showing in what we just witnessed. Very much so, JC. And I don't think I don't think Steve has moved since he took that Haymaker because it looks like he is just I I it absolutely looks like Chimera has finally taken advantage of this match and Steve Anderson is not going to be able to respond. It's like watching a Vander Holyfield in between these ropes. Just knocking Steve on his back. And you see Chimera taunting Steve Anderson, trying to get the crowd to, ta to chant for him. The referee at a seven count. Steve will trying to find his way up on those ropes, That's pulling. That's not Steve, that is Steve Anderson. Steve will lost his career here at FGW. And it looks like it's a Cobra clutch. And again, that experience of Chimera showing through there as it looks like he's got that very deep under the chin and the referee can do nothing about it because it is not an illegal chokehold right now. Actually, I said that was a Cobra Clutch. That looks more like a Kata Hajime. You are correct there, JC. And, and I, that is a... Uh, that is the move that was made famous by Taz, also known as the Taz Mission. But even though he had it in there, it didn't look like he had the right hand position. But it seems to be effective as Steve will cannot answer the referee's three count for the hand drop. That maneuver is all about pressure. And the pressure that was applied to the larynx of Steve Anderson is what we are seeing the result of. Steve Anderson down. He's out. Chimera's victorious. Very decisively. Yes, it was. Going right back to that classlessness, JC, that you mentioned earlier, having Bryce reintroduce him as the winner. No, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being proud of your accomplishments. But JC, even you, somebody who is a proud man himself, this is a little excessive, don't you I think? I don't think so. You don't think so? I think what happened with the cold a while, this yes. Right this, no. Is one of the best wrestlers ever in this territory. I love him, I respect him, I think Steve is a fantastic guy, he's a great performer, he's one half of the best tag team ever in this territory. Listen here, the spectacle of Fearsome Max should send you flying the other way, Alpha Sigma Sigma. It should send you running for the ships. 
shield wall. Because next week it looks like we got a little bit of a triple threat tag. And if I tell you the truth, how much I love and respect this guy, take a look here. See, take a look there. I love him. I respect him. Now think, Alpha Sigma Sigma, what would I do to you for those FCW Tag Team Championships? What am I going to do to you next week at Curtain Call to win those belts? You think long and hard if you even want to show up. All right? You got a week to figure it out. I'll see you next week. Shut up, Pippi Longstocking. J.C. Flash, a very, very dark threat from Ben Chimera. Premier Wrestling Federation can be found right here in Hamilton, Ohio, every Friday night. Join us for pulse-pounding, hard-hitting, old-school professional wrestling from some of today's best wrestling talent during Friday Night Fury. If your dream is to compete in the ring, Fox Pro Wrestling Academy is the place to go. Train under Hall of Fame trainer Cody Hawk and learn wrestling from one of the best of all time. Find out more by visiting us on Facebook at Future Great Wrestling. Oh, man! Welcome back to FCW Shockwave. I am JC Flash, now joined for our main event by William Wolf, William Wolf, FCW Original. Welcome Thanks. to the Shockwave. Thanks. I am pumped to be here for the first time with you, one of my best friends ever. Big moment for us, big moment for FCW. FCW Championship match. Brian Michaels, Brian Tuff, William. It's a big, Big opportunity for rookie Brian Huff. Big. I'm shocked. I didn't even know this was a championship match. This is amazing. Such a big opportunity. This is quite the emotional night for Brian Huff, who acted 
in favor of Shea Solo, really trusting the process of Shea Solo's guidance. However, we just heard having some second thoughts about what he did to Avery Hurts and about the direction that Shea Solo is leading him in. That's not quite the mindset to be in right before this FGW title match. Right, I'm not exactly sure that they're on the same page right now. It's interesting to see because Shea's been leading them him to victory after victory, but I think that Bryant Huff wants to do things his own way tonight. Bryant Michaels, such an impressive FGW champion, defeating people like Jack Vaughn, like Aaron Williams, he even beat me. Ari Alexander, last week. And now he stands toe to toe with Bryant Huff in what has got to be the biggest moment of his oh, short man. career. Sorry, it was actually uh, Ripper Blackheart who beat last week. It was Ari Alexander the week before. Not as impressive that he beat you, though. Bryant Michaels. The crowd firmly behind him. Yeah. I think they're excited to see this matchup, Jason Flatt. I'm excited to see what happens too, because I've said it time and time again, night after night out here, what Bryant Huff is capable of. If he would just give it the opportunity that he's given tonight, it's gonna to be very interesting to see what takes place here against FGW's king, our champion, Ryan Michaels. I say I think he'd be uh, a lot further along if maybe he wasn't under the thumb of of Shea Solo, and I think he's starting uh, to catch on. Come on now, I don't know about that. Shea Solo, a very, very well versed competitor. What a wrestling mind this Shea Solo has. They, they might have some struggles right now, but. Let him up. Who wants to let the champion up? Maybe a mistake. Big mistake, not taking advantage of that. This Brian, is what Michaels. Brian Michaels, we're talking about. Yeah, Michaels pacing back and forth. Brian Huff, I'm sure can appreciate the gravity of the situation he's in right now. FGW Championship match. He said he wants to do it the right way, but he still, I don't think, appreciates the crowd as much. Being behind Brian Michaels. Colored elbow tie up. Brian Huff with the side headlock. Brian Michaels countering with the side headlock of his own. Off of the ropes goes Brian oh Michaels, shoulder goodness. tackle takedown. Oh my goodness. Massive. And you see Brian Huff uh, following the tutelage of Shea Solo. Solo telling him to back it up. He did into that corner, breaking away from Brian Michaels at the right time, if you ask me. Another collar and elbow. Off, though, for a second. Like both these men look great though. Very athletic. Off of the ropes, go for the hip toss. Ryan Michaels putting on the brakes. Hip toss. What height? Ryan Huff got arm drag takeover. Far in the arm. Do not give up. And William Wolf, I know you have uh, you have a lot of experience in between this squared circle. Your career cut off early. But I know that you know what it takes to get it done in that ring. Who do you like in this match? I may know what it's like to get it done in this ring, but I've never actually beat Ryan Michaels. So, oh, big elbow right through the back of Ryan's head. I don't think that the referee saw that. The wild card. Yeah, Bright Hunt does not look particularly pleased about what just took place. I, he's, Come on, Fox, down the middle. I don't think that, again, I don't think that him and Sharon on the same page. I think that Brian Huff wants to be as himself. Like I was saying, I, I, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, Brian's a champion for a reason, but Brian Huff is one of the most athletic competitors we have at FGW. Boot to the face from Brian Michaels. Huff, talking that close line, net breaker. Here we go, cover. Very impressed with Bryant's his want to do this the right way. I don't really agree with it. it, it we, well, hold on now. Huff all continues to compromise Ryan Michaels. William Wolf, both of us know this. It, it, our actions speak louder than the words I'm about to say. But you gotta do what you gotta do in pro wrestling, in FGW, in that ring. 
And that's what Bryant Huff should have on his mind right now. Do you, do you disagree? I mean, I think he's got winning on the mind, but I don't think that, I think that he wants to prove he can do this on his own. But that FGW championship speaks louder than how he gets there. None of that's in the record book, William. I mean, you're not wrong. Shay Solo made a career as a, a, a legendary tag team champion in FGW with the, those exact tactics you're speaking of. So, I mean, there is a method to his madness. But that does speak to the conflict that we're seeing in front of us. Is Brian Huff, who, as we speak, is on the offense. Brian Michaels, he's in trouble right now. He's got him on the run. And that's exactly why he's in trouble, because Shay Solo can't keep his hands to himself. Brian Huff, Brian, again, is going an awfully long way to stifle Shay Solo, who is just trying to help him become the FGW champion. But I mean, look at the kid. He's a young, insanely athletic upstart. He wants to prove that he can do this himself and become an FGW champion the right way. That's all he wants. Yeah, but well, to your point, if he was able to get it done, if he was able to get it done without Shay Solo, there would be no denying. Brian Huff from that moment forward. He would be a made man in FGW as Ryan Michaels has too much time to rest. Double leg takedown, go for the sharpshooter. That's like Grado, shoulders down. Oh, very close kick out. Massive Lariat, oh my God. This might be our new FGW champion. Folks, thank you so much for joining us here. It will be our second to last show here at the FGW Arena. This is our main event. Brian Huff, Ryan Michaels, FGW Championship on the line. A raucous crowd. Can you imagine if Brian Huff takes this home? What that would mean for his career? That would be huge. It would be massive. And Brian Huff knows that, Shay Solo knows that. That's why he's going to the lengths he is as Michaels over the back body drop. Scoop and a oh. slam to Ryan Michaels off of the ropes. Shooting star press. It's so amazing. Exactly what I mean, one of the most athletic. Go off of the cover again. Yep. Oh. Leaping in the air with that gator, smacking chest with the FGW champion, trying to knock the breath out of Brian Michaels. Brian Tuff again, heavily on the offense. Michaels, he's done a lot of off the knee to the face, right to the jaw, to the neck. Trying to knock the skull off of Ryan Michaels, trying to crush the face. Bryant does this on his own, but more irritated Shea Solo's getting. The calculated challenger, so aggressive. And it, and it seems almost like Bryant Huff like, started to tune Shea Solo out. Uh, it doesn't look like he hears him at all. Oh, oh but maybe he should. German suplex, that was a nasty landing. Oh, oh my God! The athleticism, especially after the brutality we just oh witnessed. Oh my God, my neck hurts. Back suplex. Ryan Michaels spiked backwards by the challenger. The crowd getting behind this match. Looking to take everything out of his reserves to get the job done, going all the way up top. He is most comfortable. Michaels. But this is where Ryan Michaels is most comfortable. Finding Brian Huff vulnerable on the top rope. You're a pan uppercut. Huff looks like he's about to fall backwards. Ryan Michaels. Think, it looks like he's thinking no. superplex will. This is a turning point in this match. Whatever happens here will determine the fate of what happens in this match. This is such a precarious spot. Michaels goes down. Brian Huff. 
climbing to the top of the high red district. Yeah. Almost hitting the lights. Well, Bo dropped to the black heart of Brian Michaels. I thought that was it. I mean, his head almost took that light rig down. Amazing. Such an amazing athlete. Yeah, well, we've seen the athleticism, we've seen the ability, we've seen the technique, we've seen the tenacity, we've seen everything that Huff has to offer, and now he's getting a chance out of nowhere to showcase everything he's got against Ryan Michaels for the top prize in FGW. Chase Solo coaching him on, telling him to, to do what he needs to do, take it home. Ryan Michaels. In a lot of trouble. Huff going for that detonation kick. Michaels getting out of the way. Frankensteiner. That Frankensteiner roll. Both men are down. The referee has started the count. If that referee can get to a 10 count, this will be a double count out, but I don't think that's going to happen. Both of these men. Trying to climb to their feet. FGW Heavyweight Championship on the line in our main event. I am very, very impressed with Brian Huff. He is, I mean, this is the FGW Heavyweight Champion we're talking about. And perhaps one of the most, if not the most dominant FGW Heavyweight Champion of all time. And a slugfest, an exchange of right hands. Oh my God. Boy, well, you've been punched in the face a few times. How much longer can these two guys stand? I mean, they have to be verging on concussed at this point, I imagine. Ryan Michaels, close line. Brian back on his feet, another close line. There we go. Oh! Atomic drop to the tailbone. Oh. Manhattan okay. drop. Oh. Off of the ropes comes Huff. Oh. Shot to the gut. Russian leg sweep. Cover. That's it. Can he do it off of a simple Russian leg sweep? No, he cannot. This match continues one second away from victory was Ryan Michaels, Brian Huff continues on. Still got breath in his lungs, climbing the ropes. Telling Ryan Michaels he doesn't have it anymore. He don't got it anymore. Clearly getting into Ryan Michaels' head, I think. Irish whip. Oh! Hot oh, height on that drop kick. Usually I call it a basement drop kick, but that was anything but the basement. Ah, oh, Poison Rana! <laughs> Michael up backwards. We may have a new FGW champion. There's the cover. That is it. No! <laughs> William off the way that Ryan Michaels fell backwards. I don't know about you, but I thought that was it. I, I thought this is awesome. Amazing. I don't think that can be denied. What a main event. What an FGW championship match. Jay Solo telling him to take, home, take it dirty. Take this match dirty, win it with a low blow. Spine Buster! Been, that was the biggest spine buster I've ever seen. Brian Michaels crawling to the cover. Shay Solo up on the apron, distracting our referee. Oh my god. I think that's a three count. It's more Four, than five, a three count. Five count. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Shay Solo. Right. Saving this match for now for Brian Huff against his wishes, might I add. Ryan is very clearly frustrated, rightly so. Oh, look, I love seeing that look on Shay's face. Brian Huff. Oh. Nearly inadvertently took out Solo. Oh, oh no. 
Brian Michaels. Oh, count a row. That's it. Brian Michaels has defended the FCW Championship. Own, JC. It could be argued that Shay Solo just cost I, Bryant Huff's title. I think that Bryant would have had it. I, he might have had it if it worked for, for Shay Solo. Oh. Still. Your FGW champion, Ryan Michaels. Hey, Solo, get into the ring. He is mad. Look at the look on his face. He is mad, folks. Shay Jay Solo. Brian's saying that Brian's problem is right there behind him. Solo! Backseat Solo! That's ironic. That was kind of Brian Huff's logic. He didn't come out and say that. And look at what we're seeing now. Hit him harder, Brian! Oh, hold on now. Oh! Challenging Shay Solo at curtain call. Shay Solo piercing a hole through the skull with that look. He stared at Brian Huff like that. Folks, thank you so much for being with us tonight on Shockwave. Next week, our final show at the FGW Arena. Curtain call. You don't want to miss it. I'm JC Flash sitting here next to William Bull. We'll see ya next week.